For this last tutorial in part 2, we'll look at ways to get useful data from various web-based sources like Yelp, WalkScore, and Google. If you have been following along, you should be right where we are now. Um, otherwise, you can pick up from the 2.4 web APIs begin. So, we are going to look at three different ways of using Herman to get at data from the web, tapping into various sort of exposed APIs. Um, so, if you go to the Heron tab and go to Herman, um, we're going to start by creating a Yelp query. So, uh, we're going to need to specify an address, and for this, I'm just going to use Columbia University. So, we'll create a text panel, type in Columbia University, just like you would in Yelp online. So, that's going to be our address. And then our search term is going to be another panel, and I'm just going to type coffee. We're going to be mapping coffee shops, but really this could be anything you could search for on Yelp. And we can specify how many results we want, so I'm just going to double click and type 20 in order to get a slider pre-populated there, but we could up this value later if we want, and create a Boolean toggle, which we will set to true. This one will take a second, um, and in fact, you can look at the status coming out of the S output, but when it says finished, you'll have a list of Yelp businesses coming out. And so we'll need another component from Heron uh, called Yelp Business Info, which will let us grab information about those businesses. So it will give us a list of all of the 20 best rated nearest coffee shops so it's sort of it's not an absolute ranking it's not purely by by rating and it's not purely by distance it's whatever sort of special algorithm yelp uses to find its best recommendations so it's a little bit loose but it can still be a useful data set for you to work with we've got the address of each one um we've got the city uh the state and the latitude and longitude coordinates of the business of a point. And this is one of the things that's most useful to us. So these are points, but if I zoom, I'm actually not sure if it'll even show, but if I put it in a point param, you'll see that these points do not align with our map because they are modeled in such a way, if we look at them, that they have, they're in longitude, latitude form. They're not using the sort of feet uh, metric space that we're using. So we need to take advantage of a component from Herman called lat long to xy, which we've already seen. And we could deconstruct this point and pass it through lat long, but there's a helpful utility here where the output of this is always the necessary transform, which is sort of like the compound of translating and scaling and rotating and whatever else is necessary in order to get this to show up correctly and align with our map based on the Earth anchor point. So you can apply any transform. Um, if you go to the transform tab, and go to util transform and take any piece of geometry like our coordinates here and transform it with the lat long to xy transform then these coffee shops are mapped properly aligned to the rest of our geometry which is great so we can then use that as the basis of a text tag for instance so if i go to the display tab and grab text tag I will take these locations and maybe the names of the businesses, uh, and now we'll see all of the coffee shops that are being mapped in and around uh, Columbia. So that's one. Um, that's sort of a useful way to grab information about businesses and public amenities. You can search for, you know, parks or cocktail bars or, you know, whatever else you might need. Um, another web service that provides a public API is WalkScore, and Herman provides an interfor interface to that as well. So uh, it takes similar inputs. We're going to need to provide a location, but this one actually wants a latitude and longitude as a location, but we can still use Columbia University as our base without having to look up 
the latitude and longitude of that, because there's another Hermann component called Google Geocode. This will take an address and look it up, just like you would on Google Maps, and return the latitude and longitude. So we're going to use that to construct a point, just like our other one, in latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, and what we're going to do is use vector construct point from over here. And remember that longitude is actually an x value, and latitude is a y value, so your wires should cross here. We'll plug this in as our location. You could also specify a point in Rhino, say, and load this in. Right click, set multiple, or set one point. Um, and then, because this is not in latitude-longitude coordinates, we'd need to do the inverse of what we did here, which is we would go find xy to lat long, which will allow you to specify a point, and then retrieve the lat long. So we could actually use this as the basis of our uh, of our search if we wanted. And then what we're going to do is specify the max time in minutes for our transit, which I'm just going to use 20. I double click, type 20, plug that in as the max time. The transit mode, which is walking by default, but let's use public transit. So I just right click that and choose transit. And then we'll create another Boolean toggle in order to tell this to run. And the polygons that we get back are not going to show up here because they are also in latitude and longitude coordinates. So just like we did here, where we transformed from lat long to our world space, uh, in fact, I'm just going to copy both of these components, we can do a transform from lat long space to world space. And these polylines will then show up centered on the point that we've created. So this is a little hard to see, but it's given us sort of five steps from zero minutes to 20 minutes um, of how far you can get on public transit. So we might be able to see this better if I supply more steps. And it takes a second to calculate, but now we see sort of a contour of accessibility. We can change the precision to make it more fine. And then we can also visualize this. I like to do this with a boundary surface. I'm just double clicking and searching for boundary surface. Plug this in and we'll see a nice visual that sort of increases in density the closer you get or the more access you have from that location. So we could switch our mode, we could see how far could you get on foot, and so on. And this will take a second to refresh as it goes up to the web, and then it will draw for us a kind of nice uh, sort of mapped uh, visualization of how far you can get via that mode of transit. The last... Uh, the last sort of web API we're going to look at is Google's direction service. So the same thing as when you like look for directions on Google Maps. So we're going to pull up Google directions. And let's get directions. I'm going to use Columbia as my base point again. And this is the from address. And let's go somewhere. How about the Colonel Charles Young Playground? make that our target address. And the mode we're going to use is going to be transit. And we can specify a departure time if we want to be aware of like traffic conditions. So there's raw data that comes back, which might have more information about what it recognizes and how it recommends to go. But usually, all you really need is the route itself, which is, again, in lat long coordinates. So we're going to do the same thing, take our lat long transform and transform our route. And then we can maybe use a custom preview line weights in order to visualize this with a bit, a bit of a thicker line. And see the route that it recommends for us. So together, these three services offer you additional tools that you might use to analyze a site its access to various amenities. And as you can imagine, you can combine them. So if you get a list of addresses out of a Yelp query, you could grab the directions and travel times via proper transit modes uh, 
to each one of those. So you could say, you know, color code a route to the 10 nearest Apple stores or whatever uh, based on their travel time because one of the final output here is the, the travel time for that route. So this will happily accept uh, multiple uh, destinations. And this will need to be a list. There we go. And so this will just give us back now two uh, results.